All right. Nice Saturday afternoon. It's time to wait. What does it say? Closed for repairs. No children allowed. Oh, no. Oh, wonder what's going on here. Wait, oh, I see. Yep. Yep. I've got a good amount of grease down in the trap here. And I, I do remember, you know, that last cook where I made those ribs that there was a weird smell coming from my grill. You know what? I think it's time for me to go ahead and, and clean this thing out. This is, oh, that's, that's pretty nasty. You mean all, all of that came from my food? Well, ladies and gentlemen, you know what this means. It's time for me to go ahead and get ready to clean this smoker up. This is uh, this is definitely gonna impact my cooking. and I, I don't want any of these smells and all this stuff to kind of drop on my food. So we need to go ahead and get cleaned up and get my smoker ready to go and cook again. I mean, look at all this stuff. This is it's pretty nasty. Yep, all geared up, ready to go. We start out by pulling out the, uh, the main grate here. Just want to get this out, knock all of the junk and gunk off of this, especially stuff that's on the bottom. All those little dangly things that hang on the back side and stuff like that. So I'm just going to get my regular wire brush and just go ahead and scrape away. Just trying to get all this stuff off and um, get it cleaned up so none of this ends up on my food as much as possible. And once I'm done with that, I can really get a good look of what's going on inside the uh, inside the smoker here. Um, you know, some folks are asking kind of what's the size of the uh, the smoke chamber, and this is about as good of a look as you're going to get, even though it's pretty nasty looking at the moment. Um, we've got a fair amount of grease sitting down at the bottom. You know, I think it's been at least since the brisket cooks. So we've got some brisket drippings down there, probably some chicken thighs, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So. Uh, it's been pretty nasty in there, but we're going to go ahead and, and get this cleaned up. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and get my um, get my little uh, wire brush again and start scraping off all of those little particles that you saw that were kind of by the smokestack. All of the, uh, the little hanging things. I mean, you guys know what I'm talking about. That stuff that, you know, when you're cooking your ribs and you see some weird looking thing on dropping down on your food. I think that's where this comes from. So I'm just going to go ahead and knock this stuff down. Um, get it off so that, you know, whenever I'm cooking next time, it's just going to be a nice, clean-looking cook on top of my food. Now it's time for the messy work. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get my red paint scraper, a little um, a grocery bag or whatever, just to put my um, the scrappings in. And now we're just gonna go ahead and get all of the gunk off the bottom. I've got my gloves here, so we're just gonna pull this stuff up. We're gonna scrape along the bottom and whatever we find on the bottom, we're gonna put inside of our bag and just remove it out. And we're trying to get all of this fat, all of this grease, all these food drippings out of the bottom of the pit. That way, you know, when the fire is going and everything's heating up, you're not heating up, you know, months old grease inside of your pit, but instead we're, we're just going to be heating up, you know, something that's a little bit more current, a little bit more fresh. Um, you know, it's not flavoring and that's not anything. That's just some pretty nasty stuff down there. And, you know, when I was cooking those ribs the other day, I smelled this funky smell. I'm like, oh, man, I really have got to clean this pit. And so that's what I'm up to now. And we've just got to go ahead and do the hard work. Don't want to forget about the flat top. I mean, I do this basically every time I cook on the flat top, but while I'm here cleaning everything, let's go ahead and clean that up and scrape that, get all the gunk and stuff off of that, and we'll be ready to go. One last look at all of these drippings. I mean, all of this stuff came out of my smokers, probably like a pound, pound and a half of, of drippings and things like that. I mean, I'm, I'm glad I was able to get this up, but now I can cook and and feel like I'm getting a little bit more pure of a taste of what's actually going on with the wood, the fire, and the meat, and not just uh, yesterday's meat. And now I'm just trying to put this whole thing back together again, get the, uh, the big grill grate back in there. It's not necessarily the most intuitive thing about how to diagonalize and, and all of that inside of here, but got to get the grate back in, um, see what we're working with. But I took my gloves off, and gum, I 
now I've got grease on my hands. I mean, I took them off at the exact wrong time. You know, every time I wear this gray shirt, it, it reminds me that you um, can't get too excited, can't get too proud about yourself, that that grace is there for you. You know, I really wanted to show you guys, and I wasn't planning on doing this today, but I was really excited. Um, I had a little bit of charcoal left in my bag, and I was like, let me see if I can start this fire inside of here. For those of you guys that watch my channel regularly, you probably notice in some of the videos that I start almost all of my fires in the chimney and bring those hot coals over. Um, but, you know, this time, you know, and I'm trying to be patient, trying to, you know, learn some things. That's right, Philippians 4, 6, and 7, don't be anxious for anything. Learn my way and, and figure this one out. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and start these coals inside of my smoker and see if I have a different result this time than I've had in times before. You know, I'm showing you this because of course I actually was successful and so I'm pretty proud of myself for getting the fire started inside of the smoker, you know, using the, um, the, the grill torch and um, just letting this thing kind of go because you gotta be patient um, with this. And I think that's really been my problem before is just getting a little bit anxious with this. But now we've got, um, some wood going, fire going, and the question is, will this fire be able to hold and really ignite? And I'm telling you guys that the fire ignited and it was pretty awesome to come back in and see everything going, knowing that now I'm gonna have a really big hot bed of coals ready to go. And it really didn't take, you know, from that first fire that you saw all the way to the big one, you know, probably 10 minutes or so. And so pretty exciting to get to that point. And what better way to celebrate? Then to make some good old chicken drumsticks. And we're gonna use the uh, What the Cluck today um, as my seasoning. And you know, I've got another pretty good barbecue sauce I'm gonna you know, use on these as well. It's not really gonna be a very fancy cook. Don't have a lot to talk about in terms of making a long video on it, but just gonna put the drumsticks on there um, and see how, um, how my new smoker, or at least the new clean smoker, um, does with this food. You can tell, getting great color, and I'm gonna use this cherry barbecue sauce today. Um, actually uses real cherries um, in part of the mix, so pretty excited about what's gonna happen here. You know, these ones on the left don't have much sauce on, the ones on the right do have the sauce, and here's the final product. Let me tell you, these things tasted delicious. All right, great video, great time. Thanks for watching, everybody. Well, you made it to the end. You might make it to the end of another one of my videos. Why don't you check one of those out below? Take it easy.